Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thanks so much for joining our Facebook Live. I'm Jennifer Tinklenberg, and I'm here with Alexander, Alexandra Weisgerber and uh, Veronica Meach. Um, and we're here today to talk about just what's going on in the association, some program updates, and some advocacy stuff. Uh, it's going to be very interesting today. So once again, I'm Jennifer Tinklenberg here with um, Alexandra and Veronica. Um, so as everyone is aware, Omicron is everywhere. Um, and it is an incredibly challenging time, especially for families who are living with um, someone who has Alzheimer's or just, I mean, not even necessarily living with, but just affected by the disease. Um, so Alexandra, how are, how is the association helping these families? Yeah, thanks, Jenny. It's so good to be here. Um, and we know, as you mentioned, it's been a hard time for everyone, especially those living with Alzheimer's or another dementia and their families. And we just hope that everyone is staying safe and as healthy as possible, uh, not only physically, but emotionally as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of those support programs that are, are there for you and, and your families. Um, and we want you all to know that we're here if you need us. We are just a phone call away. We have a 24-7 helpline uh, that we will put in the chat. We want you to call us and reach out to us, even if you're not sure why you're calling pick up that phone and we'll help tease that out and, and support you. Uh, we are currently offering all of our education and support programs remotely, so either over the phone or online. Um, and we have a very robust website that everyone can visit at alz.org. So we are here, Jenny and Veronica, to support our families for those um, who are living with the disease or who just have questions about what's going on and how to support a loved one. Yeah, great. Um... Well, and you were you mentioned the helpline, which, as you said, is 24 7, 365. So, holidays, weekends, please call us. It's 800 272 3900. Um, but, as you, as Alexandra, as I'm sure you know, um, this time of year, we have a, a spike in phone calls because people go home for the holidays. They see their loved one. They're like, hmm, I feel like something uh, isn't quite right. Uh -huh. So then they call us. And this is especially true this year because there are some families who this is the first time they're seeing them since like 2019 because of COVID. Right. So, so what should, um, what do people need to be concerned of? You know, what are they looking for? What are the signs? Like, what are they concerned about? Sure, absolutely. You know, to your point is that people, many people went home this year, um, or they saw their loved ones for the first time, and they thought, hmm, this is this has been a change. And maybe it's, you know, over the phone, not something that you can notice, right? But you go home, you're with your loved one for maybe an overnight or a few days, and you really start to see some of those changes. And so really, the first thing is identifying what are we seeing either in ourselves, perhaps we're noticing changing changes in ourselves, or in our loved ones. Um, and so maybe some of those signs could be memory loss that's disrupting daily life. So perhaps you notice that um, you know, individuals are repeating or asking you questions over and over. What are we doing today? Um, perhaps you know, not remembering the scheduled appointments, even though we've got it on the calendar and we've prompted their memory to, to kind of look at that. Um, maybe it's challenges in planning or solving problems. Um, maybe it's that keeping track of monthly bills. I know this is something that we noticed, Jenny and, and Veronica, with my grandmother. Um, she was always very meticulous. Those bills would come in. She would write the check. She'd put it in her ledger, put it out in the mail. And then we started to see the big red past due signs or delinquent, going to get shut off. And we thought, you know, this isn't like Mimi. Something, something else is going on. Um, another thing that people might have noticed is just that difficulty completing familiar tasks. So maybe it was they got lost going to the grocery store they've been going to for 20 years. When you went to go you know, pick up the turkey for a uh, Christmas dinner, or um, maybe they're just having a, a difficult time with cooking or dressing or just those normal activities of daily living that they were once able to do um, without any issue. And the other part, Jenny, that we should probably note is it's not always memory or confusion. I think that you know, when people hear the word Alzheimer's or dementia, they kind of go straight to that. But it could be something else, such as um, you know having problems with visual or spatial images. Maybe they're having problems judging that distance or determining color or contrast, which could cause issues with driving um, and other things. And so, you know, to your question, it's what are we noticing? And if we're noticing things, what do we need to do about it? And and the first step is to call the doctor. We want to see what's happening. We want to make sure that we get an accurate diagnosis of what's happening. Perhaps it's not Alzheimer's. 
Um, we know that many of our um, individuals are isolated, which could cause depression, anxiety. And so we want to rule out those things and, and get an accurate diagnosis and really know what we're, we're working with. Yeah, no, I, I spoke with them. Um, I do, I do a lot of interviewing for our blog. Um, and I what, spoke with a gentleman once, or I believe actually it was his wife and the husband was having a hard time leaving, like getting into the bathroom. Um, mm -hmm. I realized that my, I froze. Hopefully you can say, oh, there we go. Um, my, and it was because he couldn't see, it was carpet to tile. And so he couldn't see the difference between, or like he couldn't figure out if it was a step or what, what it was. And so that was a red flag for her too, was just that like, hmm, why can't he get in? It's flat. Like, what's right, right. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and we see that, you know, we talk to caregivers sometimes that say, oh, I put white rice in a white bowl and, you know, my loved one knocked it off the table and it's maybe because they can't see that contrast. And that's all things that we can help with, right? Call that 24 seven helpline or visit that website our website at alz.org so that we can tease out, you know, these behaviors aren't just happening. How can we figure out um, how to manage these and, and maybe come up with a different solution? And I just wanted to mention um, that we do have a program that we're offering on February 2nd. It's at 1 p.m. And it's called Home from the Holidays, Understanding the 10 Warning Signs and what you need to, what you need to do to support your family. So please join us for that program. And I believe we'll be putting that in the chat. Yeah. And then uh, if anyone else wanted to know any of the other signs, we do have ALZ, uh, alz.org slash 10 signs, and that will take you right to our website and it lists off all 10. So that's really helpful too. Yeah, absolutely. So to, to switch gears a little bit, um, Veronica, uh, you work with our public policy team or you are our public policy team for a lot of things. Um, so I know there's a lot of stuff going on and policies and things happening um, on both the federal and a state level. Could you tell us more, like what's going on in the federal level right now? Yeah, definitely. So to kind of piggyback on what Alexandra said, a lot of folks went home for the holidays and noticed that their loved one might have some changing signs. And I've gotten a lot of calls recently from people who are really excited to become advocates and they feel like they need a way to be hopeful about a path forward and they wanna put their energies into something positive. So um, one of those ways is by doing some federal advocacy. Congress is back in session as of last week and the Alzheimer's Association is really working on three priority bills and um, and some appropriations asks to hopefully get some additional federal monies around research and public health infrastructure. Um, and some of the bills we're talking about really will affect all of us um, who are impacted by Alzheimer's and dementia. And we're looking at the ENACT Act, which is hopefully going to help diversify those who participate in clinical trials, but also the researchers who help to put those trials on so that it's more of a welcoming environment for those that we haven't typically seen um, participate in the trials. And then we're hoping to support unpaid caregivers, which I know many of those who come to us are, um, looking at providing additional grant funds to local organizations to provide training and support services for those who just find themselves in that caregiving situation without knowing what to do next and um, need that additional support. And finally, our last bill this year is the Comprehensive Care for Alzheimer's Act, which is a mouthful, but really we're looking at trying to see if we can test a new payment model for dementia care management. And that would really impact all of our families by helping to streamline that complicated maze, the healthcare maze that our families deal with um, and would hopefully make that a lot easier for them to navigate the support services that, that they um, need to access. So that's what we're working on. Our advocates are busy building support among all of our members of Congress and our two state senators here in California, as well as our senators in Nevada. And um, another big issue we're working on, many of you may have seen in the news last week that the, um, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services released a draft decision. This is a really big deal. Um, the draft decision says that they will be strictly limiting coverage for Adjahelm, which is the first FDA approved treatment 
for Alzheimer's disease, but not just for that drug. It also, the decision applies to all of those amyloid targeting treatments um, that are expected to come down the pike. So this is a really important moment for us at the Alzheimer's Association. Our advocates are um, currently asking, I think we'll drop the link in the chat, but there is a way to get involved now and we need your voice. Um, we've got a short window here where we can impact some change and hopefully overturn that decision. Um, but we, we really wanna encourage our decision makers all the way up to the president um, to look at this disease, to look at this treatment uh, and to provide access to anyone who wants to use it. Um, so please get involved today. Um, we can continue that conversation through some district meetings that our advocates are having with their members of Congress. And then we also look forward to um, hopefully being in Washington, D.C. or meeting virtually in May as part of our AIM Advocacy Forum. So that's scheduled for May 16th through 18th, and we hope many of you will look to join us and look for more information as that becomes available. I Thank will... Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think you can sign up or find out more information on that too at alz.org slash forum. You so are that, right. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty cool. So then pretty I know cool. that Nevada is out of session right now, but I think California has got some exciting stuff happening. Uh, you wanna tell us a little bit about that? I do, we have quite a bit of stuff. So session again, started at the beginning of the year and we're looking, we were so successful last year in California where we passed our SB 48 to really help um, with early diagnosis. And now we get to do some new stuff. So we have introduced AB 1618, which would create at the Department of Public Health, the Office of the Healthy Brain Initiative. And that would really be instrumental in helping to expand some of the uh, work that our local health jurisdictions can do to further the work of the Healthy Brain Initiative. So we would, that, that bill would allow 10 counties to be able to do that wonderful work. And we are hoping that um, with our advocates' voices, we can get it across the finish line and um, share our stories about why that's so important. Our second piece of legislation is around utilizing community health workers and promotores as, as um, dementia care navigators, which we know many of our families would really um, rely upon and find useful. So if you want to, Add your voice to our advocacy. We have some exciting advocacy days coming up here in California on March 3rd and 4th. So I think the registration link will be dropped in the chat for you. It's a free virtual event that um, should allow you to join other advocates and meet with your local legislator. So we look forward to seeing you there. And then, yeah, Veronica, I was able to attend a few advocacy days. Um, I didn't attend last year, the, the virtual one. So mine is the in-person experience, but uh, I just remember walking into the offices and, and being a little bit intimidated. And then on the other end is either a staffer or a congressman or woman who've been affected by the disease. And as soon as you mm -hmm. say, I'm from the Alzheimer's Association, you hear their story. And it just really kind of brings it all together of why we're here and doing what we're doing and advocating on behalf of all those living with Alzheimer's and their caregivers. Um, and so it's just, it's a great experience that I, I think everybody should be a part of at some point. Yeah, it's less scary when you're just sharing your story with someone else who's lived it too. So mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I, uh, I've been, I've also been in, to the live one. I didn't make it to last year for the virtual one, but um, it was, I mean, it's amazing. It's like, it almost feels like an honor to sit in front of a legislator and be like, listen to what I have to say. It's yeah. important. And so, you know, so that gets, that's exciting. And then it kind of, it makes you feel empowered. Like you're finally getting to, you know, do something. Cause a lot of this disease mm -hmm. feels like you can't do anything because there's no cure. So you're just, you have the disease and, or your loved one has it and that's it. But there's a lot of people who have the disease that come um, if they're in the earlier stages and a lot of loved ones who come and they, you know, it's, it's just so empowering to feel like you're actually doing something about it. Yeah, so making that it. change. I agree. Right. So um, for uh, just so everyone knows, um, the last day to sign up for that is in about a week. So it's January 28th. And I, the link is going to be in the chat because I don't know that one. <laughs> Thanks, Jenny. And we may extend the registration deadline just a bit. So to give you all a little extra time. Awesome. That'd be great. Um, was there anything else going on in advocacy that you wanted to 
tell us about? Those are the big things. Um, I've got an upcoming event that I think folks might be interested in, especially those of you who are looking for a translation in Mandarin and Cantonese. We have an event on February 18th called Speaking Up for People with Alzheimer's. And you can learn more about why it's important to be an advocate and how your voice can help to affect change beyond just your own home um, to really help caregivers and those who are living with the disease. So I encourage all of you to go ahead and um, register to attend that event on February 18th. Fantastic. So speaking of events, I know we've got a lot of other programs and um, things coming up soon. Alexandra, could you tell us what else is going on this month? Sure, absolutely. Um, so we hear and we know that some caregivers, they want to connect with other caregivers, but Maybe they don't know any other caregivers. They're not, they're not quite sure kind of how to take that first step, um, or perhaps they've never been part of a support group. And so it's kind of like, where do we start? So you know, always start with our 800 number or our website if you have questions and you're looking for resources. Um, but we have support groups that serve all of our communities. So whether you're looking for a Spanish speaking support group or a group for younger onset um, caregivers or individuals living with a diagnosis. Um, maybe you're an adult child caring for a parent with Alzheimer's or another dementia. We have a support group for you. Um, and some people think, well, maybe I don't want to be part of a support group and that's okay. Uh, we also offer a variety of education classes, um, topics from how do you communicate with your loved one throughout the course of the disease? How do you manage some of those more difficult behaviors or difficult conversations? You know, you just went home, you noticed that some changes are happening with mom or dad. Um, how do you now approach those conversations? And so those are all things that we offer educationally. As I mentioned earlier, those are um, online or over the phone if you prefer to call in. So we do have a few upcoming events. Um, one of them is if you just want to learn a little bit more about the support groups and, and hear from people who have attended them, we have a um, program that's being offered on February 23rd. And it's called Building Your Network of Support, Connecting with Others Through a Support Group. So you can kind of hear uh, what happens in a support group. And what we say is if you go to a support group and it's not a good fit, well, then maybe try another one. And, and hopefully eventually one will, will stick um, that you feel you can get that support from. And if, if you're not or you want to do education as well, um, we have some upcoming virtual education programs. So on January 28th, we have a healthy living for your brain and body that's going to be presented in Spanish. Um, we also have one that we are doing in collaboration with a community partner and it's effective communication strategies and cog cognitive stimulation strategies. So join us for that. And then we have some late stage caregiving classes on February 10th and 7th. Uh, 17th, excuse me, that's going to be presented in Spanish. So lots of resources and information out there that we just want to share with all of you, um, whether it's for you or your neighbor, please pass our information along. We, we really want to be here to support all of you. Yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. it's good that we've got lots of things happening too, you know, and as, as the year goes on, there will be a lot more stuff. So um, it's, it's always exciting. And one of the silver linings of those support groups, Alexandra, is the virtual nature of them. I've just heard so many of my advocates are happy that there's no driving and parking and all of that other time when they're, you know, many of them are caregivers. So it's nice to zoom in and zoom out and get that, you know, the support in the community that you need. Yeah, absolutely. I was on an early stage support group this morning for individuals who are living with an early stage diagnosis of Alzheimer's or another form of dementia or even mild cognitive impairment. And we've got one in our group that says, you know, when are we getting back in person again? When are we getting back in person? And another group member said, well, just I'm so thankful that we've been able to move our groups onto an online platform because I can't imagine going two years without being able to connect with all of you. So um, while we know that, you know, in person is different, we are able to provide these services that are so valuable and, and especially to those who can't drive anymore or who may be in a more rural situation. So um, again, it's, it's a service that, that we are here to provide for everyone at any time. We're very lucky. I think we have, uh, like over a hundred or almost a hundred support groups, or we did at one point, we have yeah. a lot of support groups. We so. have a lot throughout our chapter. Yeah. And yeah, I think, absolutely. um, I mean, if you call the 800, the helpline, the 800 number, I think they'll, you, they'll help you find one that, you know, fits in your time frame and everything like that. So mm -hmm. exactly. Right. Or we have our website. People can go to the community resource finder.org and find out what upcoming education classes and support groups are being offered. Yeah. Um, so yep. Perfect. 
Um, so what makes some of these amazing things that we're doing possible, like advocacy and programs that we all, we offer programs for free, you know, uh, we can't do it without the support of people who make generous donations and some of our fundraising events, like the walk and the longest day. So the money raised from walk and longest day, our two signature fundraising events are, um, care and support and research. Um, care, support, and research. Sorry about that. Um, so for those of you who don't know, coming up in June, on June 21st, is the longest day. Um, and that is one, an opportunity for you to take a hobby or some something that you know uh, helps you honor your loved one who had the disease and turn that into a fundraiser. So um, for example, if grandma like grandma had Alzheimer's, grandma liked to bake, you could bake and then sell those baked goods and take that money and donate it to the longest day. You could, um, I had like a million of them before this and now I can't think of any of them. But if you crochet, you can, you know, make your little crochet things and, you know, pot holders or hats, um, earmuffs. Um, and you can sell those. We had great success you know, um, doing those in past years. Um, but also, if you go to alz.org slash the longest day, they list a ton of online, um, like virtual fundraiser ideas that you could do, like bingo night or a wine tasting event or a mixology, an art class. There's a lot of great stuff there um, to figure out and, you know, turn into a potential fundraiser to help raise funds to support all these great programs and services that we offer. Um, also, if you register before February 28th, you get this super amazing insulated mug that I am so excited to get. I haven't gotten mine yet. It's coming in the mail. I'm, I'm counting down the days. <laughs> Have you guys gotten your mugs yet? Yes, yes. I did. it's amazing. It keeps ice in the mug for like three days, I swear. <laughs> It's now I'm even more excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, our other signature event is the Walk to End Alzheimer's. Um, it's in the fall. So we just had, uh, we just wrapped up our 2021 season. So thank you to everyone who came out and participated yeah. in that. Um, we had an amazing year. Um, we had over 13,000 participants um, who were in more than 2,000 teams. And together we raised over $6.1 million dollars. Amazing. That, um, right. And I mean, so we're lucky. Amazing. We're lucky that we live in, uh, you know, in California and Nevada, where hopefully you can still hear me because I froze, um, you. where yes. you um, where we have access to all of these great research facilities like UCSF or UC Davis. And so a lot of this money just goes right into the research that's local even. So that's, I, you know, I, obviously they have to win the, win the grant or whatever, but I mean, it's really nice to be able to see those kinds of things for where the money goes. Absolutely. Um, and so, and so it's, our walk is open now for 2022. So if you go to alz.org slash walk, you can go right over there and register for that as well. And if you wanted to be a sponsor for our walk, we're always accepting sponsorship opportunities. So you can reach out to the local walk manager there and hopefully figure something out. Um, but we can't have events like walk or advocacy day or even our programs without amazing volunteers. And I think we have some opportunities available. Veronica, can you tell us a little bit more? Yes, yeah, we couldn't do this work without the work of our volunteers. And not only that, um, the heart that I see all of our volunteers put into their work. They do this because they have a personal connection as many of us do and they're dedicated. So they give their time and all of their good resources to us. And we're so grateful. Um, but you know, this is a way to learn new skills, make new friends, um, really have fun too. And I know we are in a virtual world right now, but I've seen some really great, you know, team meetings happening and people learning from each other and just sharing good ideas. And that's what it's all about. So um, we hope that you can come and, and explore more ways to apply to be a volunteer. We have opportunities across our pillars so you can get involved in programs or do some work in marketing or advocacy, which is dear to me, um, but also fundraising and events. So those in-person events like WALK are really dependent on volunteers 
um, not only on the day of, but behind the scenes, really getting those events up and running. So I know our walk committees are really active right now and getting all of that work going. And um, so if you do have some time to give, even if it's just a couple hours a month, and um, we'll find the right place for you to plug in, um, but please do look to reach out. And I think there's a link in the chat where you can learn more information. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know right now the uh, walk walks are definitely looking for people who are interested in helping, you know, make the walk happen, you know, mm -hmm. like finding sponsors, finding, you know, helping set up the doing the logistics for the location, you know, they've got a bunch of different like subcommittees that you can be on that um, to help make walk happen. And hopefully we'll be in a better spot than we are now with COVID by the fall. Mm -hmm. So fing fingers crossed. Yeah. So, yeah. So great. Yeah. And then as, as she said, the chat, it should be in the chat. I believe it's alz.org slash NorCal slash volunteer, which is a mouthful. So the link is better. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that is all we have for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Alexandra and Veronica for coming today. Um, we're so happy you could make it. If you, if anyone has questions or suggestions or comments, please drop it in the comment box and we will get back to you if we are as soon as we can. So thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny.